So okay. welcome back to Mega Man X4. Oh, we're not doing this. No, unfortunately not. So we're going to be going to a volcano level or for our first boss of the game. Bucket, um, since this is a volcano level, do you have any kind of uh, stereotypes you're expecting from this? Fire. Oh, well, that's, I mean, obviously. Well, what, what, what do you expect in a volcano level? Besides fire. <laughs> lots of lots of rocks. Brown, gray. Well, you, you'd be somewhat correct on the rocks. So we got fireballs chasing us. So we're going to see Capcom at its finest here. Um, they kind of ran out of ideas for this stage, and they're going to be recycling a lot of parts for it. Uh, mostly these chasms with the fireballs going in and out of them. I don't know how a fireball is coming down. Uh, and we also got these little pits of fire that come out of the ground. Maybe I should have mentioned earlier, uh, the little yellow vials are health pickups and the little blue balls are uh, weapon pickups. Uh, the weapon pickups will refill your weapon meter. These guys are kind of a pain in the ass. Their missiles, both top and bottom, uh, are aligned perfectly to block your attack. And you won't be able to punch through that until much later in the game when you get the Buster Cannon upgrade. Fighting this part uphill is easily the most irritating thing. I just took my invincibility frames and just ran through the fireballs. That was Area 1! Oh boy! Ready. Now on to more of the same. You won't believe how correct you are. So here we are again with the chasms with fireballs, except this time fireballs can come and hit the platform you're standing on. So that means you only got only a few seconds to move until the fireball destroys the platform completely. There's an item up there, but we can't get it right now. We'll come back for it later. So now on top of dodging this guy's attacks, you also got fireballs coming diagonally at you. It's a little irritating to juggle between the two. Well, hey, we're gonna have some fun here. We got our first power armor of the game. This is the riot in armor. You can dash, and uh, if you dash and jump at the same time, it gives you some good clearance. And then its main mode of attack is a, a saber blade. So basically, this was the Omni tool before there was one. Uh, normal progression says you have to go up top, but you can break those blocks if you still have the riot in armor to challenge the boss with the riot in armor. It makes it a little easy. I think you're gonna. At the I think you're gonna like this boss fight. Um, you may notice that Capcom kind of ran out of ideas for bosses, so then they started stealing ideas from other games they developed. Or they used Digimon. Uh, no, unfortunately not. Looks like. But if you Digimon. notice, if you notice, he's got like a a neck uh, beads around the, his neck. There, does he look anything like another Capcom character? Kuma? Ooh, good job. Isn't a dragoon also somebody who rides a dragon into battle? Like, dragoon's not an actual animal, right? No. Okay. So now Magma Dragoon fights with Hadoukens and Shoryukens. The dragoon is a member of any of several cavalry regiments in the British Army. I prefer them riding on the backs of dragons. Magma Dragoons basically just spams fireballs. I thought you were kidding. I thought you were kidding about the Hadouken and Shoryuken's part. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, they straight up did that as a parody. Um, I don't think Akuma ever did that, though, where he just breathed fire on you like that. Uh, but Dragoon's a pretty easy boss. He only has the, two, the Shoryukens, the Hadoukens. Um, we'll see it when the boss rush, but he'll fire a ball of energy towards either side of the arena and create a pillar of fire so you can't use the wall to avoid his breath fire attack. You're normally supposed to use his weakness of uh, double cyclone on him, but using the power armor just makes this kind of a joke. Jesus appeared. 
Oh. No, no, we're not doing that. Okay. So do you know anything about uh, the Mega Man X backstory? And I don't even need, like, details. I mean, do you know who, like, the main villain is and all that jazz? Well, okay. Uh, most of my knowledge of X and Zero comes from Project Cross Zone and Marvel versus Capcom. Uh-huh. So we got our first weapon, uh, boss weapon of the game, Rising Fire. You basically just throw a fireball up in the air. Um, which will come in handy against the boss and a few items here and there. Now normally you're supposed to go ahead and go against Frost Walrus in the uh, snow, base jung uh, snow base zone, but we're going to go ahead with Web Spider first to get a Dr. Light power-up in that stage. I also did not do any editing on this boss fight, wink. <laughs> did, the, did the volcano stage live up to your expectations? Did it have all the, the tropes that you needed? Very, uh, linear. Um, you know, 2D side-scroller, what can you expect? Oh, man. The first Mega Man games, it always seemed like it took a while. You didn't go just from left to right, you really went up and down. This one, I think, this stage does a better job of that, I think, than the Volcano stage. How the hell did Dr. Light hide all these capsules uh, throughout the world and no one discovered them? And how does he always know exactly what's going on? How does he know what to give you? Isn't he dead? Uh, I believe he is in this canon. Which I know, the, you know, there's a lot of uh, experts in the Mega Man X canon. To make a long story short here with Dr. Light, he's given us jet boots, essentially. Um, X can't air dash. You, you can't press jump and then dash button normally. You need this upgrade to do it. Um, and then you can also double tap X to uh, hover in the air. Do you think maybe there's like an AI program in that capsule that knows what's going on in the wars? And if he could do that, why couldn't he just like make an AI version of himself and keep living? So here I'm just showing off what you can do with the boots. They come in handy in two or three boss fights. These guys with the tridents are somewhat irritating. They can spin their trident blade and block your attacks like that. And then they also turn around and fire projectiles at you. You know, for a world that's supposed to be ravaged by war and robots, this jungle is pretty decent looking. <laughs> Damn, it blocked my shot twice. I'm horrible at this game. Oh my god, are you ready for some platforming? <laughs> Holy shit, man. Whew. I had to actually stop here and wipe the sweat off my brow real quick. <laughs> like I said, the, the boots aren't necessary at this stage in the game. Uh, you do get more distance by kind of dashing and then jumping immediately afterwards, but it does make some instances a little easier. The problem with those little red guys, they can uh, fire their projectiles through the wall and ground, so sometimes you'll get hit and not realize where it came from. And then for this game, uh, it seems that Capcom decided that either the stage had to end in a door or a mini boss. They could they couldn't just let it go to the next stage. Ready. Oh my God! Had to disguise those. Had to disguise those. Disguise those low times. 
Oh, did you see how long it took to load that game, dude? I'm so glad we had uh, blast processing on the PS3. Load sounds. So there's solid, liquid, and solidus. What part of the jungle is this? Like, they just haphazardly have waterfalls and then it just kind of stops. I guess this is the beekeeper area. The robot honey and like... Robots gotta eat too. So the deal with the hives is, if you don't destroy the hives, they just continue spawning bees, which isn't a big deal. A charge shot will take out all the bees in the hive itself. The little webs here with the spiders. Uh, if you don't kill the spider, the web stays there permanently and will block your path. And will continue to fire an orb at you. Kill the spider, it stops doing that. And then if you have the Rising Fire from Magma Dragoon, you can burn those tree trunks, uh, make shortcuts through the level. We bypass the section completely using this, and then there's a hidden item. Which is right there. It's our heart counter. Uh, it increases our maximum health. Nice. So normally you'd have to go all the way up and to the right and stuff. Uh, I bypass that completely, burning the tree trunk. And just for a final fuck you, here's two webs that I completely messed up on. <laughs> Alright, but here we go, it's boss time. You may have to hold my hand through this, I do have arachnophobia. <laughs> Even though he gives you the option to turn back now, the door is locked, you can't run out. That so webs be an interesting mechanic. Okay, I'm just gonna leave. Level complete. Level complete. Uh, web spider fire is homing webs at you. Um, they have some degree of turning, so you gotta kind of uh, juke and drive. Uh, but this is his main gimmick for phase one. Phase two starts when he's at 50%. If the web hits you, I'm pretty sure I have it hit me after this one. Uh, it locks you in place, which isn't so bad if you get caught on the ground, but if you're in the air and he catches you in it, he'll then come down and uh, hit you again. So while you're incapped in by the web taking damage from that, he'll do additional damage to you. His main weakness is Twin Slasher from Slash Beast. Uh, there's a little gimmick to that, I'll explain it in the boss rush. And I tried using Rising Fire here, and it doesn't deal damage to him at all. I thought it'd make his life a little easier. I think I found... yeah, there we go. This is phase two. He doesn't go through the trees anymore, he just stays on the ground, fires out those little spider things at you, and continues the web. You can touch the triangle of web right there, it doesn't hurt you at all. And I die. God, you suck. Yeah. Don't ask me how he went from two lives to zero lives. I don't know how that happened, wink. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm totally not good at this game. I basically didn't want to make it, so I lost the, uh, the all-important conversation he has right as he comes out. What kind of weapon is that in the background, anyways? But Seems kind of tiny, doesn't it? Maybe it's... I don't know. We can write our name on the moon. That's about it. <laughs> maybe it only looks tiny, and the further you go in the background... It gets mm, maybe. Then how big are those trees in the background, then, too? 
Okay. Huge. I mean, for all we know, you're tiny robots right now. Oh, yeah, you like micro machine size and stuff? Exactly. This is the year 20XX. I mean, it could be any size. Nano machine. Could be nano machine right now. Like nano machine. Like this is somebody's garden and we're nano machines and it just seems like a jungle. Exactly. So what would the volcano stage have been? Um. Maybe like a really hot cookie in the oven or something. <laughs> exactly. Those weren't boulders. Those are chocolate chips. Oh, damn. So that's boss to number two down. Hooray. We'll be getting a weapon from him that we'll use more for uh, jumping around than actually dealing damage. You got lightning weapon. You got a new. Oh, you got a pallet swap. <laughs> I was gonna say it kind of looks like an NFL uniform there. So basically, lightning web uh, shoots out of web. It can deal damage, but only at the end of its arc, and then it'll stay in place for about two seconds. You can use that as a second wall to climb on, jump off, all that jazz. And in the next video, we'll be heading off to Frost Walrus' stage. Cuckoo, cachoo.